Hello and welcome to the Orwell Astronomical Society podcast for December 2015. December sees the shortest day, or winter solstice, at 4.48am on the 22nd of December. Thereafter the sun starts moving slowly north again and the days start drawing out. The moon starts the month new on the 11th and thereafter waxes, or gets larger, until the full moon on Christmas Day. Now to the planets that are visible this month. Mercury is an evening object best seen towards the end of the month, low in the southwest immediately after sunset. As always, be very careful if you use binoculars to look for it in case the sun catches you unawares. Venus will be a very obvious object in the morning at the start of the month. It will be the very bright object visible just before sunrise in the southeast. Mars will also be about in the early morning sky to the south-southeast in the constellation of Virgo, just before sunrise towards the end of the month. Look out for a polar ice cap through a reasonably sized telescope. Jupiter will be a magnificent sight to look at around 5am all month, again an obvious bright object quite high in the sky to the south. Binoculars on a tripod will give great views of the four Galilean moons and possibly some stripes on the planet itself. Saturn will be about very low in the morning sky around 7am to the southeast towards the end of the month. And of course Uranus in the constellation of Pisces and Neptune in the constellation Aquarius are there to look at if you know where. Right now on to something else to look out for, the meteor showers. December has one of the best meteor showers of the year, the Geminids. These are the most active on the night of the 13th and 14th of December when you could expect around 100 meteors or shooting stars per hour. On Christmas Eve there is another meteor shower expected, the lesser known Ursids, and these are less active than the Geminids but expect around 10 per hour. Meteors or shooting stars are simply pieces of rock, usually the size of a grain of sand, that race into the Earth's atmosphere and burn up, leaving a bright trail. Some very fast and others quite slow. To look out for these meteors, find a nice dark location, wrap up warm and take a deck chair and settle down and relax and hopefully watch the show. As mentioned last month, Comet C 2013 US 10 Catalina should be a naked eye comet visible from the UK this month, somewhat to the left of Jupiter at around 5am, and it could peak at magnitude plus 4. Now on to constellation watching, the prominent constellation of the month is Orion. Most people will recognise this pattern of stars, rising in the southeast at the beginning of the month, and rising a little bit earlier each day. As you look at Orion you will see the bright Betelgeuse in the upper left hand side, and this is a very large red star that is about to go bang, having reached the end of its current stage of life. Now find Orion's belt, the three stars in the middle. Underneath the belt is a stellar birthing ground, the Great Orion Nebula. You will see a fuzzy area, with binoculars you will see some stars, newly born, with gas still around them. Right, now look to the upper right of Orion. Here is Taurus the Bull. The red star, Aldebaran, the eye of the bull, and a little further away from Orion, the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters, another of these stellar birthing grounds. You should be able to see around seven big bright blue new stars, only a hundred million years old or so, with the gas still around them. And there is another high sight test here, how many stars can you see? Now look to the upper left of Orion, you will see two quite bright stars, and these are the twins, Castor and Pollux the brightest stars of Gemini the Twins. Incidentally, the Geminid meteors I mentioned earlier will appear to stream from around this point. Finally, look at the bottom left of Orion. Better later in the month, you'll see a very bright star, and this is called Sirius the Dog Star. And this is the brightest star in the night sky. I hope that this podcast has given you some ideas of what to look out for this month. There is plenty more out there to see, and I recommend that you look on the internet, astronomy magazines, or in an astronomy book or sky map to show you what else is out there and where to look for it. Another useful tool is, as always, a planisphere, which you can use to find out exactly what is overhead at any time and date of the year. And these are readily available from any good bookshop. 
Listen out next month for January's highlights. Bye for now.